Skylar Thomas. Welcome to the first published episode of Drinking with Sharks. Why aren't the other ones published? Well, when people become sober again, they realize they don't want anything that they just said to be published. Um, but anyway, this is a really long video, so I figured I'd better give an introduction as to what to expect. While in South Africa filming the documentary Monsters, we sat down with Walter Bernardus, who is a shark diving pioneer, and it was uh, after we'd gone diving with him and we were just going to have a braai and enjoy some drinks, and we decided to turn the cameras on, and we got some really interesting topics. Um, there's some great footage to go along with it. This was just for fun, so there's some laughs to go along with it. There's some cursing that's kind of unprofessional, but if you want to just have some fun and listen to us talk sharks, this is a good video for you to watch. Some of the topics covered are how not to act like prey, some close calls that have ever taken place, whether or not the cage dive industry has merit or not, um, do sharks suffer, do sharks have personalities, what is an apex predator, and is there a double standard when it comes to great whites and tiger sharks? Lots of good stuff in here, you just have to suffer through the fact that we are sitting around having drinks, thus drinking with sharks. You can even turn this into a drinking game, and I have some suggestions for you if you can't come up with your own rules, such as Every time we make fun of Shark Week, take a drink. Every time Walter curses, take a drink. Every time I curse, take a drink. Every time the Ibis squawks, take a drink. Every time Walter says Apex Predator, take a drink. Every time we're interrupted by the kids coming into the house, take a drink. Every time we cut each other off, take a drink. And if you really want to get messed up, Every time a tiger shark comes on the screen, take a drink. Any support is appreciated, so give a like, subscribe, buy some products, boop, 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 boop. Uh, watch Dan's videos, watch Ollie's videos, go diving with Walter, and best yet, check out this internship program where you can hang out with great white sharks for a month. Without further ado, here we go. Did you uh, think I was going to get bitten at all yesterday? No, I didn't think so. No. no. I was hoping. <laughs> I had this like, please bite him now. Please bite him. Just bite him so he knows what it feels like. Then he can, you know. You did set up that shoot. I tried my very best. But uh, unfortunately, sharks are not stupid animals. You know, they don't eat. Can I say shit? You know, they always tease me and they say like, like sharks don't eat shit, you know. So, obviously it's going to spit you out, right? Uh, you've changed your beanie yeah. to the VSW to that one. Well, it's on the other side. You like that one? You like it. Which one do you like better? I like the VSWSB. All right. But it's uh, just that... I don't know if it'll show up on camera. No, definitely it will. Eh? I can see it. The camera is definitely going to see it. So you Maybe you should you turn it a bit to the side like this so it's more in... So you love you love my uh, logo, but you won't wear it. How do you mean I won't wear it? I actually I don't see wore it. Already. Oh my goodness! It's already in the hamper, even though I washed it before I handed it to you. <laughs> Is, by hamper, do you mean the rubbish bin? It's not in the laundry basket. That's okay. It's definitely not a laundry basket until you swear so we, or something. Should we turn this into a drinking game? No, 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 I no. Think no. We no, no. You know I, what happens with me is is I, I'll have like two whiskeys. Mm -hmm. I didn't break anything. No, you didn't. I'll have two whiskeys like that and then and that's me done. But I, I drink fast, but I don't, I don't continue drinking the whole night. Uh, today you will. You work tomorrow. You're going to fly. Yeah. You got work to do. I have work to do after I drive you to the flight. All right. So now that we're framed, i got to ask that question again. Were you hoping I would get bitten yesterday? No, I wasn't. Eh? I, I, I think uh, I, wanted, I wanted some like, real nice action around you, obviously without any harm coming to you. I was pretty confident nothing was going to happen because I put myself in a similar situation many times and, uh, and nothing's happened. As long as, as, long as you, you don't you sort of have anything flashy on you, that's going to attract their attention when they're looking for the food, you know, they're just going to try and get around you to get to the food type of thing. All three of us were discussing this morning about how sometimes we, we know how we're supposed to behave, 
But the sharks are so well behaved that sometimes they come, become a bit cavalier, you know, nonchalant about it. It is a problem. If I were to get bitten, do you think it would change that, like, thoroughly? Well, uh, you know, having been bitten myself, you know, you gain a new respect and you think to yourself, what was I doing wrong that, that caused that? So, uh, it, it does change. I mean, for me, it didn't change my um, attitude towards the sharks. It just changed my behavior in a certain way that I said, okay, this happened. Why did it happen? Okay, next time, you're not going to do that anymore. So, I, I treated it as a learning experience rather than a catastrophe. You, know? uh, you want to play with my leaf. <laughs> I can just see. You want to go to Adam and Eve Well, every thing. time you move your shoulder, the plant bounces. Okay, well, how do you feel about this, like, going tropical? If it was covering your face completely, <laughs> that would be Then it would be, like, so much better. Uh, okay, let's hear about, because you're a, you know, the word shark expert. Thanks to Shark Week doesn't mean anything anymore. But... I'm going to call you a shark expert anyway, because I don't know what else to refer to. What, what would you call yourself? What would I call myself? I would definitely not call myself a shark expert. I, I, I'm experienced with diving with, with uh, certain sharks, and uh, that would make me not a, a general shark expert, but a specific. If you had to ask me about black tips, if you had to ask me about raggies, if you had to ask me about tigers, I, I would be able to... You like interacting with them, is that fair to say? Very much, yeah. So can I call you a behavioralist? A be behavioralist. I definitely look, look I at behavior. It's a behavioralist. <laughs> it's a behavioralist. Yeah, like, uh, like you get, uh, what's the guy that, that Pavlov is a behavioralist. So he rang the bell and fed the dog. You know, and then he rang the bell and he watched the behavior after doing it. And the dog was all amped and he said, okay. So he linked the behavior of ringing the, the bell to the food. I'm not going to explain the whole it's funny, thing to you. you. you talk about sharks as if they're dogs. It's compared to dogs sometimes. So it's good to, like a pet, you know, that you, you don't mind going up and, and uh, if you understand the animal, you're going up to a, even a foreign a, a dog that you, you can interact with it. The same way you can act with, interact with certain sharks. Are you sending the wrong message to people when you say sharks are like dogs? In what way? I'm uh, playing devil's advocate in the people that say they are not like dogs and people are going to not respect them properly and then get bitten. People don't respect dogs and get bitten. More people die of, of uh, attacks from dogs multiple more, you know, I don't know what the exact figure is, it's, it's uh, in a, like a huge number of people die because of dog attacks. I mean, and uh, how many people die of shark attacks, in my opinion? You're cautious of dogs who don't know. Yeah. So you're cautious in your approach to these, they are wild animals. So in your approach to any wild animal, you've got to have a protocol that you're going to be able to um, uh, uh, adhere to to have the best interaction with it how you get that protocol is going to the school of hard knocks you know so it's trying this it's 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 touching feeling and trying to understand and then interacting sometimes it goes well sometimes it goes badly so i mean when it goes badly you can't blame the animal you just what did you do wrong you again you take it take it as a learning experience and say to yourself, okay, how can I learn from this situation? For example, you tell fellow divers, don't act like prey. Yes. You acted like prey and you paid for it. Correct. Tell us about that. I inadvertently, uh, while interacting with a tiger shark and uh, over the, 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 the era that we were, we were doing shark man with Michael Rudson, we were trying to interact and we were pushing the envelope with these, an, with these animals, trying to get them into tonic, trying to understand, you know, what will put them into tonic, what won't. Um, I, uh, I had gone for a dorsal ride on, on this big tiger and uh, let it go. 
and it continued on its way out, and I turned around and swam back to the bucket. What I didn't realize that when I turned around and swam back to the bucket, and I usually include this in my briefing as well, is uh, that shark turned around immediately as well. I didn't see it turn around. And I happily swam back to the bucket. When that shark swam up behind me, and, uh, and it was like wanting to interact some more maybe, saying like, what's going on? Let's, uh, let's see what's happening. Get this party on type of thing. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I was swimming away from it, acting like food. And thought, well, there's a smell of food. There's a thing that's acting like food. Maybe it is food. And then went and, and bit onto my fin. Luckily, it bit sideways on, on my fin and gave it a bit of resistance on the first bite. And on the second bite, I managed to get my foot out of its mouth before it clamped down or I wouldn't have a foot. So um, that's where, the, that's where the, whole, the whole thing came of trying to understand what actually happened there and understanding, yeah, okay, you were acting like food by swimming away, even though you in your mind weren't acting like saying, oh, there's a shark, there's a shark, trying to get away from it, you know, and acting like all panicky. And it was just a simple thing like swimming away. And, uh, and then, then the sort of penny dropped for me, and, and including in, the, in, in our briefing, don't act like food, inadvertently or advertently. So when you're swimming anyway, from A to B, you're just swimming back in the current to get closer to the buoy. You always look back. It's very easy while you're swimming just to put your head down and you can look straight back at what's going on behind you and do that on a regular basis while going from A to B. And would you say that eye contact is enough to often deter the shark? These, the, the tigers, look, the black tips are uh, extroverts, you know. They don't give two hoots whether you're staring them in the eye glaring at them, not looking at them, the black tips. They, they, they just totally unafraid of you. And, and you're just another member in this whole game they're playing and they just carry on. Tiger is completely different. You know, if you see the tiger coming up and you're just trying to get a picture of that tiger, just turning your camera and focusing on that shark will make it turn away. So it's, it's very sensitive to eye contact especially if it's a shy tiger. The, 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 the players, you know, it's, quite, it's a lot easier to interact and to make eye contact with them. If tigers, so, if tigers are so shy, how did they get such a bad reputation? You know, uh, where they got this bad reputation from is, uh, I'm not sure. But if you read any of the, the shark books, uh, you would see these things eat anything. From number plates to... Uh, carrion that comes down the river, they just eat anything. They're garbage disposal units, basically. And they don't mind hunting, they don't mind scavenging, they just like, like the total nightmare when it came to shark. If you saw a tiger shark, they're very aggressive animals, get out the water immediately. You know? When we started diving with the tigers, that's the picture we went in the water with. And this is way back before any of the other commercial uh, places in the world were actively taking divers on baited dives with tigers because of that. The local operators even told us, look, you guys are going to kill somebody, you know, because, uh, you know, eventually this tiger is going to eat someone. So that's the picture we went in, our, when we went in the water the first time. <laughs> I love those words. Uh, you, know, you know why they do that, eh? They're scared of hearts. So every time they look down, they go, ah! Ah! South Africa considered calling those things. <laughs> oh, dear. They're, yeah. They're quite unique looking. I think that uh, in post production, you should enter a picture of that bird on the screen every time it looks. <laughs> yeah. Right, so it's one of the Arbus fi family, you know? So it's, uh, it's the only one that makes that noise, I think, out of all the Arbus. Even someone like you, who now spends his life diving with sharks, started with the rumors in your mind about the reality of a shark. Yeah, no, we had preconceived ideas, that was for sure. Eh? You know? And we went down absolutely adrenaline, petrified, not knowing what was going to happen, 
um, we actually started diving in a cave. We used to call it Tiger Cave. And uh, it was at 14 meters. We all used to be like crayfish in the cave and put the bait on the outside and then wait for the tiger to come in. So, um, you know, it, it was, it was a, a, you know, because it was at 14 meters, you basically had an hour then, you know, and then you started going into deco. Either you, re you were running out of air or you were running into deco. So you had to go up. Um, there was no way of knowing if there was a tiger when you went down. So it was, a, it was a, actually a quite a complicated process of just getting one dive in. First of all, you had to locate the cave. In those days, there was no GPS. GPSs were like way out of our price range type of thing. So we're working on landmarks and uh, you had to take the current into consideration as well. So uh, you went onto your marks, worked out what the current was doing, went up current, dived down with a, with a, a thick anchor rope and like a whole lot of buoys and, and uh, that whole scenario. Went down, uh, located the cave, if you're lucky on the first dive, tied the anchor uh, rope off uh, close to the cave and then went back up. Got a sack of sardines, went back down again, tied the sardines off and then back up on the boat. And you sit there for an hour and then after an hour you thought, okay, well, maybe there's some tiger sharks there. Went back, dropped all the divers in, they would swim down uh, to the buoy, grab the anchor rope, and even if there was a strong current, they could pull themselves into the cave. Sometimes you went there in the first 30 minutes, nothing happened. Sometimes you went down there and there was a tiger shark already. Sometimes there was no tiger shark. So, but there were, were those instances where we had to leave the cave and there were like two tigers just on the outside of the cave. And uh, we, had, we, had to, we had to come up whether we liked it or not. We were either out of air or out of time. And not knowing what was going to happen, sort of coming up the anchor rope and this tiger circling you, going around you. And after a couple of these, we worked out, oh, hang on, this, this, this shark is not really aggressive towards us, you know? And uh, maybe we can dive with this, with this shark in another manner in the open water. From there, we progressed to anchoring the boat and throwing a, a bait out the back like they do with a great white and baiting the shark in on the bait. And that worked, worked quite well. We, were, we would throw a line off the side of the boat. We didn't have a cage. We, we just had a, a shot line with a heavy anchor, a heavy weight on the bottom. And uh, when the shark was on the surface, we'd, we'd jump in the water, go down the, the rope to about five meters, like a trapeze artist type of thing. And you couldn't take too many people. It was basically two people on the rope. Sort of you had the rope going around your leg, holding on with it, going behind your shoulder like that, and you were filming as, a, as the, the, the guys on the boat would bait the, the shark over your head. One day, the anchor rope broke. And sort of, you know, but it was like, you can imagine now on a, on a big swell on anchor, when the boat went up, you went up. When the boat came down, the weight pulled you down. So it was like this, like, it was quite, quite difficult to stay on this, on this rope. The anchor broke, and, and suddenly we didn't have such a radical motion on the boat, and we could uh, just, like, suddenly we were drifting along, and these sharks stayed with us. They carried on interacting with us. And from there we developed the idea of having a stem where there's a buoy, uh, a bait bucket, and, uh, we, you know, instead of the, the boat being the, the, the buoy, we could have a, a, a buoy on the surface that um, uh, has less impact with, with wind than that because the bigger your buoy is on the surface, the more either the wind is going to push it with the current or against the current. Are you going to wrap this up, Walter, get the boring show? Well, I told you, I warned you that, that this whole fucking history of the sharks was a boring, boring story. And I and I've got a, such a boring voice as well. Why? And I I haven't finished. I'm only I'm only just a third of the way. I was wondering why when you started out, why did you not get loads of black tips at the same time? Well, there weren't any black tips. We used to bait for five hours and not have a single shark. 
to sit there baiting. Well, it was a whole day affair to, to get tigers in. So and we, we didn't know seasons. What's no, we're not going to listen to you anymore. You're going to carry on <laughs> fucking talking. I'm going to go right on. You know, after that, That's enough. <laughs> we're going to yeah, wrap this up. Uh, what, how far That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got to, we've got to circle back to the introduction of the black tits and the disappearance of the tigers later. But I've got to say, what you just said is that you learned through observation. You spent time with an animal, learned about the animal, became familiar with the animal, and the fear went away. Your you fear never goes away. It, maybe the respect throws in. The res the, you know, we, we gained a new respect for this animal, a new understanding. To say that I'm not scared when I get in the water is, is nonsense. But it's changed. It has changed a bit from this paranoia thinking I'm going to die any second. I've realized, okay, well, all that fear wasn't necessary. Respect is still necessary. Fear is still necessary because fear keeps you alive. Panic is what kills you. Fear, there's nothing wrong with being scared. Uh, people tell me they're petrified. I tell them, like, I'm also scared. I'm getting in the water with these sharks. They, they are different every day. Maybe I'm going to try something new. Maybe they're going to bite me. Maybe they won't. Maybe I'm going to learn something today. Maybe I'm not. But the fear is always there. And anybody that tells me they're not scared, the alarm bell just goes off. Eh? Dong! Either that person is stupid or he's mad. You, are you mad? I know we knew you were mad. Stupid and mad. <laughs> Both. <laughs> That's a very rare combination. <laughs> so should I have been scared yesterday? To, were you scared? Honestly, if you think inside yourself, were you just a little bit scared? Uh, you can be honest here. Yeah, it's not a gay thing. If I hadn't already done it with oceanic white tips, I might have been. Okay, were you scared when you did it with oceanic white tips? Just at the very beginning. And then after they hit you a couple of times and you realize they hit you without opening their mouths, you certainly feel better. When that shark swam up to you with its open mouth and was going to take a bite of your chest, did you have even the slightest, be honest now? Nothing. You are such a liar. <laughs> because... Did you hear me miss a beat while I was talking? Yes, you hesitated just a fraction of a second. Well, because I just finished saying that the shark... Oh, you were breathing in? in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm debating whether to include that part. I told these guys, I was like, I just finished saying that the sharks aren't interested, and the shark <laughs> hits me right then. But when you watch it, it's, I not, mean, it's, not, it's just finished and turned. Just turned in front of you and it's just trying to get out of it. It's yeah. bumping into the that other sharks. Actually, yeah, now that you mention it. It was avoiding another shark and turned into me. I was in the way of his escape path. Yeah, it looks like they bump into each other. It's like fren a frenetic activity. You're going to have the odd collision. You might even have the accidental bite. I'm not putting that completely out the picture. But you know, the fact of the matter is that, that they, you're not food to them. You, they are harmless sharks, to us, the black tips. Totally. How, do you, how can you use the word harmless when you've been bitten numerous times? Because it's always, I mean, if I'm going to go and, and grab a, a, a steak and uh, walk up to a completely wild pit bull and, and throw it the, the steak, you know, and throw it the steak and then, and then look around and, and, and sit there with the, the steak in my hand, the chances are that pit bull is going to rip that steak out my hand and maybe one of my fingers. So, now... Is it the, the shark's fault? Is it my fault? So on most of these occasions, it's my fault. You know, the, the shark is just trying to get the sardine, basically. Describe the impact of fear that you experienced when a tiger shark bit you versus the black tips biting you. You know, the effect that the bite had on you. You know, uh, um, realizing that... that you know, both, both have had their, their impact, but uh, the tiger shark more because I, I realized that if that shark had just closed its jaws, locked its jaws, you know, I would have lost my, my whole foot to this thing because they just do not let go. And once, once they're clamped on something and their jaws and teeth are, are, are going at it, I've... Those are some special teeth. 
Those are incredible teeth. They, they're designed to go through the carapace of a turtle type of thing, and they described as can openers. And, and that thing would have taken my foot off without much, much effort, I reckon. Whereas the black tips, they tend to bite you and realize you're not food and let you go. The tiger, once it's bitten something, whether it's, it's the bucket, whether it's the cable, whether it's the pipe, surround, it, once it gets, gets its teeth into it, it just will go like crazy, like, like a normal shark would, like ripping side to side. When it sees that's not working, it'll start twisting like a, like a crocodile. It'll uh, one twist and uh, sayonara. Whatever is in its mouth that's human is going. It's designed for something much more challenging than us. Absolutely, yeah. So minimal effort if it clamps down on us. It may not want to remove our legs. Look, it, it, you know, look, it, it was a mistake on, on my part. And, uh, uh, you know, shark bites do occur. Let's not kid ourselves. But... Um, it's it's a it's a rarity if you look at what's going on i don't know how to put it well i put it as start instead of listing things that ooh, south african built on what i want to bring up is what was going through your mind after we had our initial talk the hypocrisy, no, not hypocrisy, the double standard between tigers and whites. Yeah, it's a natural reaction for everybody to think that the tiger is less of a threat to the great white. Uh, the, the great white, the biggest shark ever caught is a tiger. Bigger than any recorded great white. Over seven meters. And... Uh, so there's no doubt that the, as an apex predator, it is right, I wouldn't say it's the great white, then the tiger, or maybe the way you look at it, the great white, then the tiger and the Zambezi, and then all the others. I think the apex, the top of the pyramid, is the tiger, the, the great white, and the Zambezi. Those three predators are at the top there. And... Uh, why look at a tiger differently to a great white? Why? Exactly. It's, it's like but pioneering. Even you did it. Initially, because it's a preconceived idea that we have that's been fed to us by publications that we read by scientists who we regard as, as experts in the field. And they say X, Y, Z. And when we read it, we think, oh, jeez, no, no, that's, that's actually correct. In the meantime... We don't ask, a lot of times, and it gets you into a lot of trouble, is asking why. Why is it like this? And sure, <laughs> that little word can get you into a lot of trouble. But I'm detracting now, because what is your initial question? Well, maybe we should pull it up. Maybe it'll, let's, uh, let's, do a, let's play a little fun bit here, where we look at Walter's footage and describe what we're seeing. Unfortunately, I need that hard drive. For our viewers at home, we'll switch the view so you can see it as well. Walter, I want you to look at the screen in our studio up there. <laughs> uh, is that that curved uh, 46 inch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. But you got the wrong video on. Oh, shit. To get can I get the... some decent help around here? <laughs> oh, you know what I noticed while going through your footage today? Someone put a cage. Yes. During that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dive. No on the second it. day. Well, I, I, I tell you, we had dived, uh, I think it was a Saturday, and then we dived again. It was a Friday, and then dived a Saturday. It was Saturday and Sunday. And uh, I had a, a customer here, and the, he would not get in the water, regardless of all the assurances I gave him. I said, look, just get in the water with me. I'm going to be like your bodyguard. If a shark is going to want to bite you, I will throw myself into its jaws for you. There was a, <laughs> ah, just to try and get him in to get the, to have that experience, well, you know. Done that for me. You know the answer to that. <laughs> Damn. 
Now I feel like your feelings are hurt. I, I've got to hear a question out of you. Uh, I can't think of anybody running. Well, because you've had a beer or what? It's got to flow naturally. Right. It's got to flow naturally. Well, let me ask you some questions. Then. Oh, yeah, that's a nice twist. Let's have yes, 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 Where'd yes. Where'd the yes, bells yes. go? Donut. Is it right here? Good. We're going to get snuckered today. First no. thing Walter said when I walked through the door was, I thought you were bringing absinthe. <laughs> Man, that's what I he said last it. night. That is what we said last night. I thought you all would have dismissed it. Yeah, you wanted the hallucinogen. Uh, I will go to the store right now if you guys are done. We don't get that. We still don't get that legally in America. You want to ask Dan a question now? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, you know, you've been here how long now? In this area. I missed it. Doing this documentary Two weeks. with Skylar. Three weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. And, uh, and have you learned anything from this whole experience? Uh, Two weeks. I've learned many things. Yeah. What have um, you learned? Well, I had a very basic knowledge of the way things work in terms of beach nets beforehand, but I certainly have much more knowledge on that side of things. But also, it's been really interesting to see how most of the perceptions of sharks are within the public communities. Um, it's not something new that people are afraid of sharks. Yeah, that's to see for sure. Just how much it's ingrained in people, certainly holiday makers, is quite alarming. And 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 you know, what do you think is the? How, what can you attribute to this uh, different concept? The holiday maker, the diver. The shark lover, if you would like to say, because you get you get divers, you know, and you get divers that that really want to interact and and dive with shark, and you get divers that that would rather never see a shark. Mm. So and you get the general public, and uh, you've had a a bit of a cross section of all of them, eh? And and what would you say? Where where does this thing come from? That uh, the general public is so unaware, so... Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to the unknown. So many people don't know much about these animals. We all, would all fear an animal that we don't know anything about. Um, but something like a shark is a very, it's a very easy thing to get into your... If the helicopter hadn't done it, I was going to cut you off. <laughs> Anytime I talk. A helicopter goes past. Really? Let's put that to the test now. Dragging a banner, says... Dan, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Bells, followed by absent. Yeah, right. Yeah. Think, to answer your question, the shark is a very easy animal to be afraid of because it's still an animal that's portrayed as being such a, a bad guy in, in so many media outlets. Um, so it's very easy to fear a shark and very easy to not find out anything about them. Um, the difference between your diving community and the bathing community is that the diving community have an opportunity to see them, whereas the bathing community usually don't. And that's the difference. Would you say this cage diving that's going on where they're taking non-divers out in the holidays would be able to change that perception, or do you think the cage diving is adding to this? Uh... I think if the reason they're being put in cages is because they don't have any ocean experience or aren't qualified divers, I can understand why they would do that. Something that we often talk about is that we've never met anyone that has had a shark dive or a cage dive and then had a more negative opinion of the animal. So if you're putting non-divers in cages and then at the end of the day they maybe even got out of the cage and started snorkeling around, which some of them often do, that has just completely changed their perception of the animal they thought they had to be inside a cage to be protected from, and that's a good thing. You're talking about cage diving in this area yeah. as yeah. opposed to cage diving with a great white. Yeah. And, and how would you say the perception of that person leaving the cage dive with a great white is as compared to a person that's got out the cage with the, with the black tips and the tigers over here? Yeah. Uh, well, you can't get out of the cage with a great white, certainly not in the area that uh, I'm I used to working in. Legally. 
Well, really. But a lot of that comes down to visibility. You wouldn't want to get out of the cage with a great white in really terrible biz. Yeah, I think the difference with cage diving with great whites is you're never going to get out of the cage in the areas that we do it in South Africa um, with your clients. But again, in the same way that people here change their perceptions, every single person that I um, took out cage diving when I was with, uh, with the company out there, every single one came off the boat with a more positive view of the great white shark, which is probably the shark that everyone wants to be afraid of. A lot of people go out to try and see Jaws and try and be afraid. and They, go, they call it an adrenaline uh, experience, whereas actually the reality is it's an, a completely graceful and um, different experience to what a lot of people are expecting to see. And that does good things for sharks. Very interesting comment that, that you made there. You said everybody comes off the boat with a more positive attitude towards the great white. In what way is, are they more positive about the whole experience? And I, I, I honestly, when I, when I left, when I left that, uh, that cage, I, I was thinking to myself, there is no way in this God's earth that I am getting out of that cage with this particular shark. And, and I, might be, I might be wrong, but I, I would venture to say that 99% of people getting off that boat have the same opinion. That's why I'm asking specifically, in what way are they more positively um, You felt less, pro less confident getting out of the cage when the bait was a tuna head, but more confident when it was a whale. Oh, this was many years later, so I had gone from, from like uh, one way of thinking about sharks in, in general, specifically tigers and whites. Whites been more of an unknown factor to me, to uh, that, you know, getting in the water with, with the whale. I mean, I would say for a group of people that go cage diving who are kind of travel, uh, traveling and tourists, for that group of people to get out of the cage with a great white shark in an area where it is hunting, which is the only place you can find them, is a bad idea. That's not good common sense. Well, I mean, if you say, if you say a great white is hunting, and I'll tell you that a great white is feeding on a whale, uh, how's that different? Is that There's not hunting? Hunting and feeding. Oh, uh, hunting and maybe scavenging. Yeah, when the great whites are hunting, they're behaving in a different way to when they're feeding. I understand that. I take that point. But uh, in what way are, are you reproducing that when you're doing a cage dive? Um, well, you're seeing a lot of predatory behavior when you're doing a cage dive. You're at an Be island full of cinnamons. Sure. But uh, there's no way that you are uh, uh, throwing a seal in the water. You are throwing a bit of food in the water. It's still presenting a challenge for the shark, and it has to pursue that bait in order to get it. It's mimicking hunting behavior, and we don't want to call it actual hunting. It's, yeah, it, it, the, the, I think the operator is forcing that, is, is like enticing that animal into like a, a more of a feeding behavior in order to make the whole spectacle a little bit more exciting. In some ways, yes. But I would also say, and you will definitely see this as well with your sharks, is every single shark behaves differently. They all got are, their own personality, that's for sure. Even in a cage diving situation where you've got chum off the back of the boat, tuna head off the side of the boat to, to lure them in. There are, even in those cases, sharks that you will watch swimming around the boat and go, you can get in the water with that shark and you'd be okay. And we had quite a few of those. And you'd also have sharks where you go, you would not get in the water with that one because it's not going to tolerate you being there. So understanding that first, before anything else conditions and all that. But nobody's that really put that to the test. Nobody, nobody has said, okay, that shark uh, okay, we don't want to get in the water. That's the shark we're going to get in the water with. I think it, people like Mike and, and we did that. We did that with the, with, the, with the tigers. The people said, nobody gets in the water with that shark. And we said, okay, well, maybe we can get in the water with this shark if we adhere to these. We, we tried it in this way and that way. And, and, you know, we don't really know the answer, do we? And for, to me... The, what we portraying of those animals is like, in the end, not the real picture. 
I could go and dive in, in let's, okay, let's take the visibility out of the equation and put your big sharks, your small sharks, whatever, whatever size great white you want, okay, and put it in clean water so that we can interact with it on a regular basis. Guadalupe, perfect example. I could go to Guadalupe for the entire season and dive outside the cage, and I, what would happen to me? You'd have a great experience. Exactly. Would there be one of those sharks that you would say, okay, this shark, nah, we can't get in the water with? Potentially, but you'd be able to read its signals way before it showed any aggressive behavior. Would you say that me getting in the water, then uh, that, that's me gone? No. Why? Because you're saying that, okay, this is not a player. We definitely don't want to get in the water with this. Um, I, I would almost guarantee you that I could go to Guadalupe for the entire season, get out the cage, do daily dives with those great whites, all the different sizes, all the different whatever you want to call them, and I would come home at the end of the, that period, whatever it is, three months, four months, five months, how would you change your diving behavior if you came across a shark that, in, in your opinion, was showing what you might call aggression? That's a very interesting question because uh, exactly that happened with, uh, with w one particular shark. There were two great whites uh, on, the, on that um, uh, carcass. One was a bigger, I think it was a female, if I remember correctly, and the smaller one was a male. The smaller one was far more interested in what was going on around the, the carcass than uh, the big one. And um, when that shark showed an interest in me, the way, the way I responded to it was by showing an interest in it. So it totally, it said to itself, hang on now, this, uh, this is totally unexpected behavior. This thing is not running away. This thing is suddenly interacting with me like it's one of me type of thing. And, and I don't know what, what the, because I haven't had that much experience with great whites. So I don't know what the response was going to be. But the response was like, Jesus, like unbelievable really, that uh, I could interact with it. I could ride on its dorsal fin. It turned around, swam right up to me to say like, who are you? I said, this is me. I'm not really food carry on your own particular way and, and do your own thing. And, and that's exactly what happened. So that's the way I responded to an animal that looked at me in a slightly... But you sort of answered your own question because you know how to behave. Random divers being put in that water might not respond appropriately when a white shark shows interest. And it may not want to eat you, but it may continue the intimidation process when it sees an opening to which a could, point which could end with a bite doesn't mean it wants to eat you doesn't mean you're not going to bleed to death that's why we have a thing called a dive briefing dive briefing especially when we're diving with apex predators is something that we've gone through the learning curve and we've said okay we broke every rule of your dive briefing when we were down there looking through our lenses well, okay, what rule did you break? Keeping our heads on a swivel. Not being globally aware. You got away with it. You did. You, 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 didn't, you broke the rule. The fact that you didn't, nothing happened to you is, is that it just ha there happened to be no apex predators around. Black tips, we can't regard as an apex predator. We're not in their food chain. They don't look at us at food. So let's do the same thing with a great white or a tiger. You, you may not be... Like six times out of ten, you might get away with it, but or even eight, nine times out of ten. But there will be that one time that you won't get away with it. So, I mean, those rules that we put in place are put in place for apex predators, number one, and put in place for your own safety, things we've learned to do and not to do. I got out of the cage in Guadalupe, and there was, and it's on camera, where a diver was signaling for me to come and adjust some of my equipment. And I turned away and was swimming back towards the submerged cage. The white shark followed me. Now, if I hadn't turned around in time and he decided to, and I, this is 
huge conjecture because I don't think he was going to come anywhere near me. But if he had decided to give my leg a nibble, and I that mean, would all have been because I was distracted for a minute. I mean, that's all it takes, you know. It, it, it's, it is a big ask, and as, us as, as professionals that are taking customers into the water have got to be like on, on like hyper alert. I've, I've got to be looking at what's going on. I've got to control the whole dive. If there's apex predators around, I've got to be like very strict about what's going on and what's not going on. So the way we were diving around, you know, with the black tips, knowing that, look, 99%, nothing else is going to show up. I could let certain things happen and, and let you get away with certain things. But if it had been a, a, a shark dive where there's tigers around and uh, more than one tiger players, I would keep the whole thing a, a lot more tight, a lot more, as in actual fact, I, I say, to my, say to the guys, especially in the old days when, when there were uh, quite a few sharks around, I, I gave them three warnings. Eh? If I walked, I, I went to you, number one, that was your first warning. Number two, and I told you what to do. Number three, you out the water. I, I can't take the risk of you doing something stupid just because you can't, your dive skills are not there. You can't maintain buoyancy as a simple thing. You don't want to respect the rules that have been put out there for your own safety. Then you out the water. Yeah, with an apex predator, I wonder if they should even get three warnings. <laughs> Maybe not. This has gone down a very interesting conversation path, but before we forget, I don't think we finished addressing the initial challenge of it in the effect that the cage dive industry has on people, the white sharks. And I don't know if you were going to get to this, but I think your observation of it, having already had a ton of information about sharks and then seeing it, would be different than your average tourist who shows up thinking Jaws is going to eat the boat and then sees this animal that is calmly cruising 90% of the day versus the 10% that we all end up seeing, which is when it actually goes for the bait. But I still remember the first time I saw it. I was like, I had no idea they were that calm, slow, calculating. You barely even see the tail move. It's like a ghost gliding by. People don't know that's what a white shark looks like. So for that reason, I think they leave thinking in a more positive manner. If, if, that's, what they were, if that's what they saw, but that's not what they see. I, okay. Almost all my trips, it takes almost the entire day to get seconds of action. I think the bulk of what happens is the calm gliding. But hold on. And you're going to say something, but let these guys come in. Am I, what do you guys experience? There's some incredible ambush <clears throat> stuff happening, but it's not teeth against the cage. For the, okay, not until teeth shark, about the, but shark <clears throat> comes up and intentionally makes that happen. <laughs> but, but how many times does it actually go, go for the bait? It rushes out there. It's trying to get the bait. It's a mouth open. That is, doesn't always swim into the cage. Obviously, they, 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 they're they now trying to stop that type of thing where they're saying that the shark might get injured, blah, blah, blah. But if I'm sitting on the boat as a first time going out and, and witnessing this whole spectacle and that shark comes up and it goes for that bait once and it goes for that bait twice and it's rushing at this bait and it's big white teeth but it's still going for the bait. These are people who think it's going to turn and eat the boat to get to the people that are on board. Well, that's the, that's the next that's the next step visually, people isn't it? They still think that. No. They really do. Well, they just they still make movies of it. Shark Week made a movie of um, what is the name of that shark? Colossus or something? Yeah. No, 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 that, that was Megalodon lives was just a diabolical, but this one was <laughs> Colossus. Let's not even get into Colossus was a, like this huge great white that sank this, this fishing boat, ate everybody on board, and they managed to retrieve this camera, little camera like yours. Sorry, I didn't say little. Nice camera like yours. 
<laughs> Sorry, what do you... Some, something that you do give um, clients an opportunity to see and they do see very quickly is just how different every shark does behave. And that's the concept that is often lost on people that have only got shark week or jaws to draw on for experience. The understanding that every shark is behaving in a different way is quite a new thing to a lot of people. And we spent a lot of time before we even got on a boat talking to the people in the while they were having breakfast about the different unique individuals that they might see that we've been seeing recently. And a lot of people found that very interesting because you could say when one of them turns out, oh look, there's nubs, he's going to be very relaxed and they would then watch him for 20 minutes being very relaxed. Ah, here comes uh, Blackgill or Satellite or Trix or whoever it was and they're going to be much more aggressive and you're going to see how they turn to hunt. And then when they got off the boat, they're now thinking, well, every shark is behaving in a totally different way, just like dogs do. Yeah. Again, we were saying before about, you know, quite often seeing the, you know, the shark coming out and out the boat, that was often just certain sharks that would... That would there, are, that. there are sharks who I saw many, many times in, in Mossel Bay who I never saw breaching. They never made any lunge. They never made any explosive movements towards bait or boat or anything, cage. And then there were some that I never saw cruising. Almost every single time I saw them, it was going for a breach, going for it. And, and what is the relation in size compared to the calm one and, and the more feisty one? Yeah. Oft, often the younger ones are a little bit more feisty, a little bit more jumpy. They haven't quite got their hunting skills honed yet, so they're still learning quite a bit. But then also on the flip side of that, there was some... Uh, take two examples. One named Trix, she was the largest shark I ever saw there, four and a half meters. Uh, which is big for Mossel Bay, and she was very calm, very slow moving. Another one, Blackgill, just over four meters, was very, very quick. I never saw her cruising. So I think a lot of it does come down to personality. Mm. So every time Dan's talking, you know, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> bird. A bird on the plane. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you brought Black Gill up because we've got to sit here and watch videos of Black Gill making Dan and the rest of us look like fools. It's a very clever shark. Oh, goodness. Now, speaking of sharks that have different personalities, Chris Fallows mentioned when I asked him about shark personalities that there are sharks that never come anywhere near the boat, but they know they're there thanks to the tagging information. There's ones that have absolutely no problem coming to the boat while others stay away. And I love what Dan was getting at in the fact that if sharks act individually, therefore have a personality, so to speak, don't you then have to question if there isn't something different up here than you ever thought or would attribute to a shark? Uh, they, uh, they definitely got their own basic intelligence, that's for sure, you know, in that they've got a very small brain in like that fucking thing flying up there. <laughs> They've got a very small brain. That that brain is is uh, I think enough for them to operate the way they, they they need to operate. But they learn and they adjust and they adapt. I, I think that, that that it's across the board for any anything living on this planet. So that's there is a bit of evolution. Yeah. They they uh, learn from different experiences. Is that enough to make it a sentient being? Do what do you, you mean sharks, by... Do you think sharks suffered? When suffered? Suffered. Let's imagine a shark slowly drowning in a shark net. I think, I think cutting a tree, the tree suffers. So then, yes. So I would definitely say that animal feels pain. I, I, I see when I take a, the hook out or I'm just taking a bit of line out of, the, out of a, one of the black tips, I can see the intense pain that it's got in, in uh, what I'm trying to take it out or when I'm just trying to get rid of the line so it's less of an irritation knowing that I'm, I'm never going to be able to help it completely by taking the hook out. But they definitely feel pain and uh, in that sense, I would say yes to your answer. Even not being part of the game. You and that bleeding heart Even brigade. Not, be, not being part of the bleeding heart brigade. I'll... How good does it feel when you have completely relieved a shark of a hook and a line dragging on it? 
Well, you can imagine uh, like alleviate, alleviating suffering for any animal, be it a dog with a porcupine quill in its nose that's really suffering, being a, a shark with a big hook in its mouth, being able just to, to take that hook out and relieve it of that suffering, you know, is I think a good feeling for you and, and it's helping the shark as well. You can just imagine this like pain eventually going away, the sore tooth type of thing. And uh, it's really rewarding, but unfortunately, unfortunately, it, it's very difficult to do because they are always so sensitive, so much in so much pain while, while having this, this thing in their gums and, and jaws that it, it's really difficult to accomplish. I uh, no no not really. Not not in my experience. I've I've never I've never had the the whale experience freeing it from nets. I've never had uh, turtles, um, that kind of thing. I've only done it with sharks, and. Um, I've heard about it over there. Maybe they don't make the link um, between no. Tell us about the decision-making process of whether or not to remove that hook. It's, it's because you're putting yourself in a dangerous situation. You're putting yourself, putting, getting your hand near its mouth. You don't know how the animal is going to react. Is it going to feel that pain and suddenly snap? Is it going to, what is it? You don't know what it's going to do. So you, you are putting yourself really in harm's way to try and help that animal and uh, you, you don't know how it's going to go when it goes or when it goes well fantastic when it goes wrong well you tried you know but what about letting it rust out versus ripping it out and letting the heel wound heal it depends on the hook reading some hooks are steel hooks and they will eventually rust out the process takes ages um on a steel hook, the first thing that's most probably going to go is the barb. So it, it will get, let you get the hook out a little bit easier. On a stainless steel hook, it's never going to deteriorate. It's going to be there forever. So um, you can, by, by just looking at, at when the shark goes past, you can see what kind of hooks it's got in it. Is, are they stainless? Are they steel? Is it, is it going to get out or isn't it, you know? Is it going to deteriorate and, and sort of rust away eventually. God knows how many years it'll take for this to happen, uh, or is it never going to happen in the case of a stainless steel hook? Would you ever take the hook out of a great white? <laughs> nice. I, I have never, I, I, I don't have the experience with a great white to know that I can uh, get it into a state where I can actively try and get the hook out. But I, I feel that I, if, if, I had, if I had the opportunity to uh, interact with them more, to learn more about them, then I would have the, the possib I, I would have the, that chance, that understanding to say, yes, okay. Wasn't that the premise of Shark Man, to put the white shark into a tonic? Yes, but it, it was never achieved. Because Is it possible? I believe so. I believe it's possible with, with all the sharks. It's just you learning that uh, this is the method I must use with this shark, and that is the method I've got to use with that shark. Why isn't... Hello? Okay, if you're going to... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you over here. So you're going to talk softer. <laughs> you are shouting at each other. Even I can hear you, and I'm deaf. It was mostly like him running like a monkey that was distracting. <laughs> Let's play a game of Walter reacts to his own footage. Okay. All right. Sounds like a fun game. This is a fun I'm game. I'm looking forward to it. I think, uh, I think... Yeah, I think you need some more whiskey for it. Okay, we're going to have another sip of whiskey. And surprise, Ollie actually did bring some absinthe for the second half of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. That would have been brilliant. Okay. So. All yeah. right. We'll show the people at home what you're looking at. Okay.
Very interesting. Yeah. And is that not what... Call, call. If you shout, we're going to hear you. So you cannot shout. If you whisper, we'll hear you. If you whisper, we'll hear you. So you can't say anything. <laughs> so... Very interesting, very time. interesting interaction. Interesting? Very interesting. Number one, I would say the, the, the whole thing was what interested that shark with that particular diver? You know, I, you know was it the wetsuit? Uh, was it his behavior? And, uh, I, I, you know, I thought it was a wetsuit. Just the color of that wetsuit intrigued that shark and it turned up and had a good look at him. Obviously, as a shark, when it, when it approaches something and it's, and it's interested in it, the first thing it wants to do is mouth it because um, that's how it gets an idea of exactly what it is, any of the apex predators. So now the key to that whole interaction was how did the diver react? Mm. And the diver, being a friend of mine who's dived quite a bit with, with uh, tigers in the past, knew that to, to suddenly panic and start trying to get away from the shark Number one, you're never going to get away from it. So, number two, he knew, okay, Wait, stand you your ground. Phelps can outswim the shark? Phelps <laughs> cannot outswim any fucking shark. <laughs> Why did that great white knot turn around and have another look at them? Why didn't it? It's because of the way he reacted towards it. So if he had, had reacted in a way that he had a cough or a broken door that he was trying to slam, <laughs> <laughs> then I would say that, yes. I can't tell why you two got along so well. <laughs> I think we got a good time. Starting with, you ask, yeah. why did the shark come at him like that? You ask, why didn't it come back at him? All right, and go. Well, that's <laughs> obvious sign that Dan is about to talk. I thought Ollie was about to talk. Okay. <laughs> Don't, because I just carry on. Like. Okay. Definitely make you run a, one more whiskey. Ollie, <laughs> Ollie's up. Oh, man, got, uh, <laughs> this is hilarious thing. And he's, but uh, you should use it as a... As a we will. We will. We'll yeah. be creative. We will. Walter, it's just so full of suggestions. So, why do you think the shark turned around and came with the diver like that? I don't know if it was the color of his wetsuit. In actual fact, I thought exactly that. I thought the wetsuit intrigued it and it decided to have a look at it. And, uh, and, uh, because of the way the diver reacted in, in not panicking under the situation and, and dragging the bry across. <laughs> if everything you do, we can hear for fuck's sake. <laughs> We're just trying to get three things done without you as making a noise, please. Perhaps if your answers were... Shorter. <laughs> uh, there's no ways I can do a oh, yeah. short answer. Okay, here we words, go. Ready? Maybe. Okay, so I think definitely the color of the, that guy's wetsuit was intrigued that shark and he went and he, something about his behavior, the color of his wetsuit intrigued that shark and it went to have a look at him. It wasn't just peeling off from the whale? No, no, definitely not. It went straight up to him and had a good look at him. The way the diver reacted, he didn't panic, he didn't try and you know, act like food and trying to get away, stood his ground, and that shark gave that shark just that second to hesitate, and it wasn't quite sure of the situation. And uh, he didn't act like food, and he wasn't sure if he was going to act, should, should he act like predator? Okay, in this case, uh, no, I'm not going to act like predator. And that's exactly what happened. Sharks are actually quite clever in that they, they very seldom put themselves in a situation where they could get hurt. Exactly. They're not, they don't quite understand the situation. It's new to them. Yeah. 
they rather, you know, like back off and reassess the whole thing rather than go in and maybe get injured. We're not quite so clever. We are. are definitely not that clever. In fact, I think I have quite a few clips of you demonstrating that. Not being clever. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see those so clips of not being clever. This clip, for my reference, I titled, Walter Rides Finn, Shark Says Fuck Off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, shark coming in is having a look at me. I'm deciding, all right. Shark, this is something completely new to you. This is me riding your dorsal like a remora. Shark saying, okay, I don't like that too much. Okay, I said, all right. But, all right, shark coming around and saying, what the hell just happened? What was that? Oh, it's something. Really reminds me of the tiger shark story you told, except in this case, you turned and faced it. Yeah. Thank God. Exactly. Yes. It's Ex exactly that. Right? Exactly that. If I had turned around there and just like swam off randomly somewhere, the result would have been completely different. Yeah. Very much like, like you pointed out. I didn't actually think about that, but you are 100% correct. Yeah, I obviously <laughs> learned something, even me. <laughs> so, so what, did that tiger shark encounter happen before this? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you actually learned and applied it. Can we call that coexistence? You know? It's, yeah, one, one animal interacting with another animal, uh, saying, yes, I like this, no, I don't like that. What the hell just happened? Who are you? I say, it's me, I'm not food, but I'm just here as well. But when it has teeth like that, you better make sure you know what its reaction was before you swim off. Good point, yeah. In other words, keep your eye on the animal and just make sure that it's uh, not too, much, too interested in the whole thing. But let's milk this further. People that are anti-shark and anti-shark diving are going to be like, that shark wanted to kill you. Is there another explanation for how it came up and then nosed your camera? I th you know, the way the, what happened, I think, was um, the, the, whole, the whole dynamic of the thing. Okay, so the shark swam up to me initially, looking at me. And I thought, is, you know, let's, let's portray something else to this animal. Let's, let's make it think about things as well. So I'm not going to act as a, as a piece of floatsome. I'm actually something. So I went down and I... And I rode on its dorsal fin, and the shark didn't like it, so I could I sensed that immediately. I let it go. In this case. In this case. In other cases, you could ride for kilometers on the back of that fin, and it wouldn't give uh, two hoots. Is that the personality of the shark, or the way you grab the fin? It's it's a combination: the personality and the way you grab the fin. So, uh, so, you know, that shark then turned around and thought, oh, wh what's going on here? Who is this thing that just grabbed my fin? Swam up to me, and I said, okay, I'm not food, this is me, I'm not running away from you, but let me let you feel something that, that's not food, you know, in terms of swimming up to my camera, touching that, realizing, mm, that's not so nice, and then carrying on in its merry way. Let's go and rather eat the whale. That's a lesson from Andre Hartman, as I learned. Don't let the shark feel something that encourages it to continue to bite. I'm sure Eric Ritter learned that lesson as well. You know, he, he felt that, that, that uh, uh, Zambezi nudging his leg, he decided, no, well, this this never going to bite me because it, in actual fact, what happened, it was bitten because that he allowed that shark to feel something that might be food, and he ended up losing bits of his calf for that. So, if you're going to let the shark feel anything, let it feel something that, that it doesn't feel like food at all. Anti-sharkers love to use that as an example of see what happens. 
Do you have any defense for Eric Ritter in this case? I would say Eric Ritter fell into the same trap as I did. He, he became blasé. He became, um, you know, he, I wouldn't say lose respect for the animal, but he, he became too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, man? Too casual with the whole situation. He, he allowed that thing to bump up to up against his calf and, and it didn't react. And he lost bits, a bit of his calf for that. Uh, ah. Pretty special footage. White shark, tiger shark, bull shark. Zambezi, yeah. All in one shot. All feeding together without biting each other. And yet, the bull shark is the most aggressive. Is it? Uh, I would true? not say that the bull shark is. Uh, that, as I made a point earlier, I would say all three of those sharks are the apex predators Zambezi, tiger, and great white. I wouldn't say. Great white. Everybody wants to do that. Put it on a pedestal as a it's an apex predator. But equally, the the Zambezi and equally the tigers are both on the same level, in my opinion. They're both size, the, size wise. That makes sense. We when I think of a big predatory shark, I think white tiger. Bull can get big, but I don't think of it as one of the really big ones. So why do you think it gets classification as top three? It's just an apex predator, and and uh, if you want to just it, 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 you know what do you use as a as a uh, determining factor what makes it the apex predator right. size, what? Prey. Right. What they prey on. Great right. whites will hunt elephant seals, which are enormous. Yeah. Whereas bull sharks probably couldn't tackle something like that. I've been told, and I can't. I don't know this, but I've heard that the bull shark's jaws are so lethal that they actually are designed to hunt other sharks. Look, if you look at the teeth on, on, a, on a Zambezi, on a bull shark, it's the same shape as a, as a great white, just slightly smaller. Yeah. Uh, the biggest bull shark recorded was over four meters. The biggest great white recorded was probably in the, in the six meters bordering on the five to six meters, the biggest tiger recorded is in the seven meters. So why isn't the tiger the apex predator when it comes to size? Why do you think that that tiger couldn't tackle an ele elephant seal? Of course it can. That because the reason that I'm hesitating is because I always see Tigers moving so slowly. I never see the breach exactly. attacks, the launch attacks. Also, is a tiger's teeth designed well enough to be able to cut through something as tough as an elephant seal blubber? That that I mean, yeah. that tiger's tooth is designed to go through a carapace of of a loggerhead turtle. Now, anything that can go through the carapace of a loggerhead turtle is going to absolutely demolish anything else. There's nothing but it's on this planet. Get its mouth around. So the mouth has to be designed to get that. Well, a seven meter tiger. <laughs> do you understand that that seven meter tiger is going to have a half a meter from this end of the jaw to that end of the jaw? The same thing as, as a, a, a six meter great white. From this end of the jaw to this end of the jaw, they're going to be pretty much the same size. Whatever goes in there, is getting taken out. It's just that the, the, the great white operates in cold water, the tiger operates in more tropical, subtropical areas, you know. So it's, it preys on different animals. To say that one is worse than the other or, or greater than the other or higher on the, on the apex ladder than the other is, is completely wrong in okay. my opinion. Look, there's a, the, that dive we did with the great white, I mean, with, sorry, the dive we did with the whale was, it's the first time anybody has got in the water where all three apex predators are present. There's never been another incident on this planet where we've had tigers, great whites, and Zambezis, yeah. the three apex predators present in one location, on one dive. 
And uh, I think they're trying to... I did see black tips in there as well. There were black tips, there were duskies, there were memory. So there were lots of other types of sharks. There were loads of duskies, big duskies. There were loads of black tips as well. But the apex, all three apex predators were there. And to see them interact completely different to terrestrial animals was so interesting because they, they, didn't, they weren't competing. It wasn't like the, way, like the lions are eating and then they move off and then the hyenas come and then the jackal come and then the, the vultures come. Everybody was just getting involved. They were operating quite happily. It was like something completely I new. Know, that's such a good point. Why is the pecking order system different with these terrestrial apex predators versus the ones that are under the ocean? No, I've got no idea. But all I can tell you is that, the, and you can see on the video, that they weren't interested in each other. There was food there, and they just all went for it. And they took turns, though. They, I wouldn't say they took turns. As they felt, they went and had some. You know, they felt like they were going to go and eat, a, have a bit. Off they went, they had a bit, and then there was no like, I'm, I'm the great white. All you guys stay away. Yeah. On the second day, us as divers had a huge impact on on those uh, on those predators because uh, on the second day suddenly everybody realized okay sure we can dive with these animals and there was a, a huge uh, a number of divers in the water and you could see the difference that if if you dived on the whale you'd have a few tigers and that's compared to the first day if you moved off by about 20 meters you like encountered this wall of sharks like black tips there were tigers you know and, and they weren't coming in because we were there in greater numbers. So um, they were used, they were sort of, it, it was almost as if they were used to their own presence with a minimal uh, uh, diver impact on it. But at the moment that the diver number went up, they felt uncomfortable with the whole situation. So the size of the diver in combination with the number of divers caused some of the smaller sharks to be intimidated. No. Or all sharks. All of the sharks to be intimidated. Some of the sharks weren't. They just continued. But Almost uh, like they were giving you the chance to go in and get yours. Off uh, you could look at it like that. Yeah, and get, let's, let's, these, we don't know what this is. Let them go and, and feed and get happy and uh, move off and then we'll come back. But they were coexisting. They were allowing each other to feed. They weren't interested in conflict. They were interested in survival. Absolutely. They, they were getting on like a house on fire. Can you think of a species that doesn't fit that description? Humans, lions, any of the other apex terrestrial uh, predators. You know? uh, definitely, if you look on the terrestrial side, when a, a leopard or a lion, whatever is taking the, the, the kill down, it, it dominates that kill until it's had its share or it's chased off by something else. In this case, there was, there was no competition at all. Absolutely none. I mean, you, you, you've got sequences on that video where the tiger shark is crossing the, yeah. the great white. Yeah. The great white could have taken a bite out of the tiger any time it wanted. It could have nudged it to say, look, listen, I'm here, get the hell out of here. The same with the Zambezi. It just didn't do it. it. It just like swam past, no worries. It wasn't necessary. It, there was plenty for everyone. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. It, uh, but, uh, you know, did it know there was plenty for Would everybody? Would there be a different situation where it wouldn't be so accepting? Let's take an elephant, dead elephant. Sorry. Let's take a dead elephant and a whale, uh, and sorry, let's take a dead elephant and we've got the, the lions feeding on this dead elephant. Do you think those lions would allow the hyenas to come and feed on the other side? Not until they were intimidated out. There was there's no chance. Do you think those hyenas would allow the jackal to come and feed or the uh, vultures to come and feed? 
that we could this consistent fighting and bickering going on, even though there was ample food for everybody. It's just a different uh, hierarchy on the terrestrial side compared to what's going on in the ocean. This has been Skylar Thomas and Walter Bernardus telling you that sharks aren't dangerous, but they will kill you. If you don't follow the rules. That's a joke ending. What's a better ending? Oh, you want a better ending? I don't know. I like that ending, but a lot of people won't take that very well. Ah, it's the truth. They, they, can. they, they can kill Let's you. Let's discuss this word dangerous. It's uh, tricky. Oh, three minutes. Okay. I hate to say, after I give a talk about shark behavior, a lot of people like to say, oh, wow, I never knew that sharks were harmless or weren't dangerous. I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't say that. No, look, they're wild animals. So, as, as a wild animal, it's the same thing as you going into a bar with a face like mine. And once you've had a couple of drinks and that guy's had a couple of brandies, he's one that's going to beat the shit out of you for no particular reason. You know? Do we have to give a reason to these things? That's, that's I love that you said that because we don't seem to allow any room for forgiveness for these animals. They're not allowed to have a bad day. They're not allowed to make a mistake ever. If a shark bites and kills someone once in a year, it's once too many. Exactly. No yes. matter what was going on in its life, no matter if we took away all of its food, no matter if we were diving on its terrain, if a shark bites a human, it's war on sharks. It's actually diabolical the way we think about these animals, isn't it? So, yeah, look. What was the initial point that we made? I forgot now. Using the word danger to describe Dangerous. It. Yeah. No pressure, but you got 30 seconds to something. No, up. fuck it. My mind just gone blank. Eh? Maybe it's the whiskey. It's the lack of absence. The lack of five. absence. Oh, we still have some time. Oh, we got loads of time. 35 seconds, you can knock somebody out Robert three really times. explain the use of the word dangerous. It's dangerous to walk down the street. It's dangerous to do anything. It's dangerous to go surfing. It's dangerous to go driving. Driving from here to the beach is dangerous. So we, we tend to put rules in place to make that less dangerous. How do we do that? We have a you have to have a driving license. You've got to be competent to drive that vehicle. That vehicle has got to be, have certain safety standards so it's safe to drive. That Real cell phone. Real professional. Real fucking professional. Over there. And we're done.